You're listening to Gamers Digest, a podcast where your hosts put the controllers down just long enough to talk about gaming news, rumors, and anything else they can think of. Here are your hosts, Spider One and Mr. Factastic. Okay, I made it. Welcome. Yeah, Welcome. I uh, I had to do some rushing around. I forgot that I I have Kingdoms Am Amalore. King. Oh. Let me let me start over. I have Kingdoms of Amalore downloading, oh. and I don't want that to interfere with the show. Oh. So yeah. legally, legally downloading. I bought it. It was on sale for like six bucks. Cool. All of it, like DLC and everything. Okay, I remember so. you you had owned it at one time. I owned it for, for PlayStation. For PlayStation, yeah, okay. and. Uh, it's a long game, so I never got a chance to finish it, and I I liked it. It was just really long, mm-hmm. and uh, but then PC had it on sale. I think Gamers Gate had it on sale for like six it, bucks. It does seem like a game that would probably be better suited for PC. It's basically an, a single player MMO, so mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, we are Gamers Digest. We talk about gaming news, rumors. Uh, you know, we we do a little bit of everything in the gaming sphere, so um. This is our, our great, amazing show. This is episode 62. 62. We're getting up there. We're, like, over the hump. I know. We we are almost in syndication, because don't you need 70 episodes to go into syndication? I think so, yeah. So That's we, pretty cool. We could be on cable TV in syndication. I mean, we are on cable TV. We are. Uh, in the local channels. Mm-hmm. So if you're in Anne Arundel County, Maryland, you can check us out. Also in neighboring, well, if, you, if they own Verizon, it's in neighboring counties as well. Oh, that's cool. So like yeah. Howard County stuff. So, yeah. I didn't know that. PG County. So like my people at my work could like see me on TV. They probably can. Yeah. Oh, that's that's embarrassing. <laughs> no, I I love doing the show. Uh, we have a lot of news this week. Uh, just mostly because PAX was this weekend. I mean, mm-hmm. we are in full convention swing. Like this is the big time of year where they do a lot of the uh, consumer conventions, yeah. not so much like the the trade shows and stuff. But you know. A lot of cool news came out this week, but before we get to that, what uh, what did you play this week? This was a pretty slow week for me, gameplay-wise. I wanted to play some Pacific Rim, and I also wanted to buy the uh, T- Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of Shadows game. I did play the demo, mm-hmm. and I was, like, kind of impressed, but, you know, <laughs> I might need to play through the demo again at least one more time before I make a decision. I mean, 15 bucks isn't, you know, a huge setback. Right. You know, I mean, the gameplay felt a little clunky and slow. I guess it really depended on which turtle you were using, because you could switch between all, all yeah, four Yeah, all turtles. four of them are on the, on the screen at the same time, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, and it was like some of the combat and stuff was a little slow, and... It looked weird. Not too much. I mean, <laughs> it, it was it was what I expected, you know? And, you know, I just need to play it again. I also played the Madden demo again. I mostly play the demos for the Madden games until... You know, it they, drops in price. At they GameStop. become thirty bucks. Yeah, yeah. And then I'll and then I'll pick it up. Uh. Madden, Madden twenty five seems like a game that you could, you know, keep. You know, get pick up and then keep that for a while. Okay. For me, I'm 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 the type of Madden player that can stick with the Madden for you know so for so long and not really care too much if the roster is different. You know, but yeah, hmm. Madden twenty five seems legit. So. You weren't too impressed with the Turtles game, but you weren't sure about it. In Madden, you're you're yeah. a little more impressed with what you were, yeah, at I least mean, compared to 13. You know, especially especially with football season starting back up, it's just <laughs> good to play another. It's it's just good to play a football game again. Yeah, I I can understand that. I haven't tried uh, the Turtles demo, but I have I have actually played the Madden demo, and that's not bad. I mean, I, yeah, the the stuff that they did under the hood, I was I actually really liked. So it was. It, it's a good direction for it. I think yeah. now they need to start analyzing some of the the game modes and stuff, like mm-hmm. maybe fix some of that stuff up. Whereas now the I think the engine is in a good place. Yeah, I, I think twelve by Madden twelve by far is my favorite mm-hmm. Madden of all time. You know, we'll see we'll see what the final version of the twenty five is like whenever I get to play it. But yeah, yeah. So far, so good. I uh I played I played a good amount of StarCraft 2 this week. 
Um, I'm making that bid for pro. I, uh, I am currently in the bronze league, which is like bottom of the barrel, like worst of the worst, uh, fighting my way up. Gotta start I, somewhere. I, yeah, I went two and eight. So I am starting somewhere slowly. <laughs> I like to think of it as I'm letting other people beat me so I can see how to beat other people. Ah, oh, that's a good strategy. It, it, it sounds that way, but really, <laughs> StarCraft II is such a hard game to implement. Like, I can, I can be like a tactical genius. Like, I could be Napoleon in here, mm -hmm. but my hands are like this. So. Yeah, that, that's like, it's kind of like, how it is for me in like filmmaking like i have an idea of how i want something to look in the frame you know the composition and everything and when it comes to like adding special effects and stuff like that it's like hard for the mind to computer screen translation it's pretty pretty tough well like i'm watching these pros play and one of the one of the big measures of starcraft is actions per minute apm basically how much you can do in a minute and some of these pros are reaching like three and four hundred actions per minute now like that sounds like a lot but when you think about it it gets even worse like that means that they are literally hitting something four to five times a second. Four to five times a second. That means they are literally, like, banging the keyboard to do stuff intentionally. Like, I can't even do, like, that fast unintentionally. So, That's weird. Like, my APM is at, like, a rock-solid, like, 50. Like, I can do something about every second. Sometimes it gets a little higher. Like, sometimes I can get into the 60s and 70s. Um, but that's it. Like, so that's like using hotkeys and stuff like that? Or? Yeah, I mean, it, like, you're using the mouse, you're using the hotkeys and stuff. Like, they, they just know instinctively, like, how to cue stuff up, how to do stuff, how to hmm. split stuff. They, they, I mean, they do it so much that they have to. I mean, they're yeah. pro gamers. It, it's kind of like me, me comparing myself, like, oh, well, I, I can kick a 10-yard field goal. I don't know why these guys can kick. 60 yard field goals mm. it's kind of like that like th these guys train every day to do this kind of thing whereas i play an hour and a half a day banging my head against the keyboard mm. so uh i also tried to play final fantasy 14 uh, notice i said tried like i wanted to do a review for it but i really didn't get enough game time this week to to play it mm. um it's just there's a lot of server problems right now and we're going to talk about it in our discussion but, uh, like, you can't play the game. Like, you can't even get in to play it nine times out of ten. Um, actually, starting right when we started the podcast, they took all the servers offline, and they are upgrading the server architecture to hopefully fix their... Hopefully fix the problems. But we'll talk about it in the discussion, because this, this has kind of been snowballing in my head pretty much since SimCity. Mm -hmm. um, with what we accept as a as a, I guess, gaming population. Uh, and I personally don't think it's good for us. It's yeah. definitely not good for uh, the developers, but it, it's definitely not good for us. So we'll talk about it. Uh, we do have a lot of news. Um, the first one is actually probably the news story I'm most excited about. Like, I won't shut, about, shut up about it. I mean, <laughs> how much have you guys heard about this over the past two days? Uh, at PAX... Uh, Kenji in Fumi. Yeah. I guess that's how you say it. I should know how to say his name. He's the guy who basically made Mega Man. He's basically the guy who made Capcom what Capcom is. Yeah. Uh, well, a couple of years ago, Mega Man, actually last year, Mega Man Legends 3 was canceled and he left the company, uh, you know, dispute, stuff like that. Yeah, he, got, he got tired of getting crapped on. Right. So after Legends 3 was canceled, he left. He, he started his own company. And since then, he's kind of been, like, thinking, like, how how can he make the game he wants to make? And then, you know, over the past year, the only thing anyone ever talks about is Kickstarter. And mm -hmm. it's Kickstarter this movie, Kickstarter this game, yep. Kickstarter my sticker collection, you know, yep. stuff like that. So, of course, he was like, I have my Kickstarter. So he launched his uh his Kickstarter for Mighty Number no. 9, mm -hmm. which is basically Mega Man. Yeah, like, it is a modern-day Mega Man. The, the, con the concept art looks similar right you know influenced or well i mean is it really influenced if he's the guy behind right it? and that's what he says like it, it if you go to the kickstarter page which will be in our show notes but if you search mighty number nine it's the first thing at google uh it, there's like a really cool documentary with it and he he says that in the documentary he's like i don't have access to my my previous works uh but you know it's still my work 
-hmm. So, of course, my new work is going to be derivative. Mm -hmm. It's it's still my stuff. It's ingrained in me. He's like, mm -hmm. I can't make anything different. Yeah. And actually, one of the things people were wondering about is if Capcom was going to come back with like legal action because it is so similar. Uh, well, maybe if Capcom let them make a game, it wouldn't be... Right, and Capcom actually, uh, I don't know if they've officially put out a statement, but they, they have said, you know, we're not going to put legal action against it because, you know, even though it is similar, that would be like Call of Duty and Battlefield suing each other. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, it's the it's the same genre, and even beyond that, it's the same guy. So, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, uh yeah, hit, check that out. Mining number nine. It's already hit its goal. Yeah, it hit its fundraising goal, so the game's gonna get made. It's gonna come out for PC like next year. Twenty around. I think they said early twenty fifteen is what they were aiming for. Okay. Um but I mean stretch goals include Mac and Linux versions, which they've already hit that one. Uh the other big one is uh a stretch goal for PlayStation three, Xbox three sixty, and uh Wii. I think Wii U. Yeah. Um now everybody, of course, jumped in that and were like, "Well, why not the new gen systems?" And he came out, you know, in in the Kickstarter, and it says point blank, like, "We just don't know the technology." He's like, "We we wanted to keep the goals realistic, uh, and we know the current technology." He's like, mm -hmm. mm, "If we get enough money, you know, we'll definitely consider it." Yeah. So. Not. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Check that out, Mighty Number no. Nine. Uh, so have you have you uh, backed it yet? Not yet. I I am probably gonna put, uh, and I'm still thinking about the amount because the the bonuses you get are actually pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Like they have like retro style game boxes, like manuals, art books. You know, depending on how much you you stuff. Uh, so I may I may put fifty to it and get the the art book and stuff. That's cool. Um, because that's just like a, a normal game. Yeah, I've only backed in the three years that I've known about Kickstarter. I've only backed. I think three projects, and this one, this one might be definitely worthy. Yeah, and like I mean, that. you can for I think fifteen bucks, you can back it, you get the game, and you get something else too. So, which is what the game's going to cost anyway. Mm -hmm. So, yes, yeah, yeah, check it out, Mighty Number no. Nine. Google it. Otherwise, wait for the show notes. Yep. Uh, Nintendo announced the uh, the two DS, which was a little surprising. It's basically a three a flat 3DS yeah. but that plays all the 3DS games and Nintendo DS games, but in 2D. Right. Yeah, and so. we talked about this a little bit when they announced mm -hmm. it. Like, a lot of people were like, well, that seems stupid. But it for the people that say that seems stupid, you're not the audience. Like, mm -hmm. I can tell you flat up, they don't want they you to They didn't make buy. it for you. Yeah they, yeah, they made that for, A, the Pokemon fans. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, yeah. that's clear. Uh, and two, they made it for the younger audience because for most people, they don't know that I think it's 10 and under, but it might be 12 and under. You're not supposed to allow kids to use the, the 3D. 3D yeah. uh, it, it, it was, it'll, it'll mess up their eyes and their head. Right. So this 2DS is is perfect for them. It's now, also a lot cheaper, like 80 bucks cheaper than the, right. uh, why spend $200 for something you can spend like 130 or 120 Exactly. 120? Yeah. So, yeah. It, I I think it's a good move on their part. I mean, honestly, it can't hurt. I mean, they've already got the 3DS yeah, rocking the market. Yeah, we knew the hand. Nintendo owns the handheld market. Let them stick that. Let them become. Let them get comfortable. And they, uh, of course, all the jokes and stuff aside, somebody put out a a mock up today of the Nintendo 1DS, which sounds stupid, but when I read it, it was less of a joke and more like an item pitch. What it is is it's a Wii U gamepad mm -hmm. uh, that can put 3DS games on your TV, and you use the the game screen as the touch screen. Interesting. So that actually sounds pretty cool. Hmm. Like if if they could sell that for like 130, that would be pretty cool. Interesting. So one DS. One DS. <laughs> All right. Xbox One. If you haven't pre-ordered it, you still can at select markets, but it's getting harder and harder. Uh, well, you can win one by doing what most of you probably already do anyway, mm -hmm. uh, drinking Mountain Dew and eating Doritos. Yep. I don't want to stereotype gamers, but yeah, I, I lived off of Mountain Dew and Doritos until, you know, I got married and then I had to actually eat real food. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I've never tried, um, 
Xbox, uh, the Gamer Fuel. I've never tried it before. Gamer, Game Fuel, Gamer Fuel, or Game, Game Fuel. Fuel, or whatever it is. I actually like it. It's it's a lot like Code Red. Uh, I don't know what the new flavor is like, but they they had the Pitch Black, and then mm-hmm. they had the actual Game Fuel, which was like Code Red. And I like Code Red, so. Hmm. But yeah, you can you can enter to win just by, you get codes, and uh, basically the amount of codes are the amount of numbers of I guess entries. So the more you eat and drink, the more entries you have. Yeah, towards winning. How many are they giving away? Did it say? I think it was like 500 or something. Yeah, it, 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 was, it was a pretty good amount. It was a substantial amount, but uh, interesting. So, so literally, you can trade years off your life for more entries to win an Xbox One. To take away years of your life yeah. while you play it. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. It's a win-win for uh, the Grim Reaper. Yeah. Because uh, we, we know Microsoft has been in bed with uh, the Grim Mountain, Reaper, Mountain, well, 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 with the Mountain View and Doritos for quite some time. And the new CEO of Microsoft is the Grim, the Grim Reaper. Reaper. Yeah. Oh, didn't see that coming. No. Here you go. More more Nintendo news. Uh, Nintendo has no plans for an ambassador pro- program for the Wii U. Uh, they did it for the 3DS, which basically means if you bought it early, you got a bunch of free stuff. They said, nope, Wii U, uh, we're not doing it. So. Oh, yeah, we for, did, did we mention that the guy had a price drop, or was that last week? That was last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so, yeah, that kind of sucks if you did get the Wii U early, and now you can't, no free games or anything like that. It's, that does kind of suck. Yeah. Oh, it's, well. Yeah. I mean, I think it's been a long enough time, and, like, I think the reason they did it for the 3DS is it happened so quick. Like, it, it was like, maybe if the Wii U had done the price drop officially when those European markets were doing it. Mm-hmm. Maybe then they would have felt a little bad about it. But it, the Wii U has been out for a good amount of time. Yeah, so, almost a year. So, I mean, uh, a price drop isn't unheard of. Yeah. They were holding out. They held out long enough. Yep. Let's see. Oh, <coughs> Sony created a uh, third-party production division to for, what, porting of games to the Vita? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's... That's a little weird that they have a third party, first party games division. So they have a, a team solely dedicated to taking other games and making them for the Vita. Like Borderlands 2 was the big one. Like they, they had to make their own team for it. But they wanted Borderlands 2 that badly. So there you go. Yeah. So hey, how long before they get all laid off? I'd say a year. Because the Vita is not really selling well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Borderlands 2 did get an upgrade today. Uh, you can raise the level cap again. It's five dollars. It's not included in the season pass. Makes everything you've done this far outdated. Borderlands 2 is literally like an MMO. Like they have mastered it to the point where, like, oh, it's a single player co-op game. Mm-hmm. No, it's it's an MMO. It's yeah. just hiding the fact you don't have to pay a subscription. <laughs> <sighs> Well, let's get back to uh, Microsoft. Two old games, well, I think one of them is really, really old, came out for Gold, if you're a Gold member for Xbox Live. They are they are bringing the pain to PlayStation with this gold, Games for Gold, uh, I, I guess that's what it's called, Games yeah, for games, Gold. Yeah, Games for Gold. That, I mean, okay, first of all, the games are, I think, 2013 Magic the Gathering or something like that. Which sounds current, but it's not. 2014 actually came out two months ago, and it's getting its first DLC this month. And Rainbow Six Vegas. Which was, if I'm not mistaken, close to a launch title for the 360. It was like 2006. Yeah. It is like super (laughs) old. That is the free game that they're giving us, you know. I, I, I was appalled when I read that. I'm utterly disgusted by Microsoft. Uh, what is like, dude? That is like horrible. Mean, meanwhile, PlayStation yeah. is giving out Resident Evil Chronicles HD, mm-hmm. which even though they are remakes, it's a new remake. Yeah, it's like uh, it came out like a year or two ago. Right. I mean, Ico, which is a PlayStation Two game, but it it's probably one of the best PlayStation yeah, Two games. Yeah, classic. And Galica Legions DX, which is another like high end PlayStation Network game that's sold millions. So. I don't think Microsoft gets it. Like, sure, you can give us free stuff, but if it's crappy free stuff, nobody's yeah, yeah, gonna want yeah. it. Well, yeah, it's, it's they are so stingy. 
I was like, I was looking at their deals of the month or whatever, and it was like, <laughs> I, I didn't, I mean, it did, I did not feel worthy at all. Like, I think it was like five dollars off of some six, fifty or sixty dollar game. I did not feel like I was getting a deal. We do, we do deals of the week time to time. I try mm-hmm. to do them every week, but some weeks there are no deals. Uh, a lot of those I pick up off a of cheap ass gamer, and there is a long running joke of Xbox Live deals. I guess I shouldn't call it live anymore. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, they changed the name. The Xbox Live Marketplace is now the Xbox Games Store. Game store, yeah. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the reason they changed it was just to fall in line with the other stuff, like the music store, the movie store. And then you saw Xbox Live Marketplace, and I guess people got confused. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know. But, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, so you're saying there was a, you said there was a long run joke about all their deals, like their yeah. They, basically, good. they they always put deals in qu- quotation marks, <laughs> like oh you can get these these deals, and it's like payday one for five dollars off. It was like wait, it's like six bucks on Steam, and you're trying to charge me twenty five. Yeah, so it is so ridiculous. Microsoft, you should you should you should know better than that. They got the money. I mean, they they could. They could give Halo 4 out. They could give, you know, they could give AAA titles out. Mm-hmm. Um, and just do the, I think the thing that hurts them is they don't have the the thing in place like PlayStation does. Whereas if you have gold and games for gold, once you download it, you get to play it. Regardless of if you keep gold or not. Oh, okay. So, I, it, as much as a lot of people hate the PlayStation Plus model, which is, in order to play the free games you get from PlayStation Plus, you got to keep having PlayStation Plus. Yeah. Uh, it allows them to do better stuff. So I think there's that trade-off, and I honestly think that trade-off is worth it because we're getting games on PlayStation Plus like Red Dead Redemption, yeah, and Uncharted Three, whereas on Xbox we're getting Assassin's Creed Two, mm-hmm. which is four Assassin's Creed games ago. Yeah. So come on. <laughs> Come on, man. It's like a NFL <laughs> network. <Yeah. laughs> Come on, man. Uh, football this week. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, PlayStation Home is closing its doors to new content in Japan. I uh, I don't know if you ever did anything with Home. I screwed around with it for a little while. A long it, time ago. It's basically The Sims for PlayStation people. Mm-hmm. Uh, without The Sims gameplay, like you basically just screw around. Mm-hmm. Uh U.S. and other regions are still going to get content updates, but I guess Japan just wasn't feeling it. Yeah, Th- that just reminded me of what I wanted to preview this week. Uh, Sims 4. Oh, yeah, it was announced. Okay. Yeah, next week. That'll next be my preview. <laughs> <laughs> We're very prepared this yes. week. Labor Day screwed me up, yeah. man. Like normally, I have the show written by like Monday at work, and then I just like touch it up. Uh, whereas. I was writing the show last night at like 11:30. Yeah, well, yesterday, <laughs> yesterday I logged in really quick while I was like working. Like this weekend, I was like working a lot on figuring out CG compos- compositing and a- animating and stuff like that. Because right. I, I, this next project that I'm working on is gonna have some dinosaurs and stuff that I want to put in there. And you know, I've just been practicing. And um, so I was doing that yesterday, and I just logged in really quick to see. And then I saw that um, I put the games that I played on there, and I saw that you were just just now like putting some stuff in. Like I was like, oh. But, yeah, you know, it, it, it was a holiday weekend. Yeah, and PAX was still going on, mm-hmm. so, you know, I didn't want to miss any of the big news. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Spawn, anybody remember who Spawn is? Spawn, the comic book character, uh, was confirmed for Soul Calibur 2 HD Remix. We haven't talked about it, but basically it's a network download of Soul Calibur 2 in HD. Yeah, I remember... That was probably one of my favorite Soul Calibur games when it came out. I think Easily. It, yeah. Um, and that and on that game for the different consoles, it had different like exclusive characters. Spawn was for the Xbox. Right. Link was for the GameCube. That was a version I had, and I think Hayachi was for the PlayStation Two. Right. Yeah. And they did confirm that both Spawn and Hayachi will be in this version, which is only on PlayStation Network. Okay. Uh, as far as I know, uh, Link is probably going to be a no go. Yeah, so sadly, the fact that he even made it into it the first time was pretty surprising. Yeah, that was pretty neat. But uh, yeah, that it's coming out later this year. It looks pretty cool. I mean, most of the screens show that it is 
a a much better looking game. And you know, Soul Calibur two, I think, in terms of gameplay, was probably the most sound because uh, the other one started to do some other stuff that kind of muddled it up yeah, a little bit. Gotta, that makes it look crazy. Five was pretty good. Yeah. Five. Um, the Android console, the Game Stick, which I thought was already out, but it, it's going to hit um, shelves now on September 30th. End of this it, month. Yep. Originally, it was supposed to come out back in April. That's why I thought it was already out. <laughs> so I was like, that, when I saw that news story, I was like, oh, wait. That's weird. Um, I think GameStop's backing that one more so than it. We, I think it like, helped with the funding or something for it. Yeah, and it's it's actually only available for pre-order through GameStop and Amazon. Uh, but... Honestly, it seems a lot like the Ouya, another mm-hmm. Android console, you know, open source, stuff like that, so... It seems a little more, uh, dare I say, more appealing. It's cheaper. Than the, the, than the Ouya, yeah, it's cheaper, and it's just, all, it's just the controller and the, a little, um, it looks like a USB yeah. um, stick, and you just, but it's HDMI, you just plug it into your HDMI, and you're, you're, you're ready to go. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool, uh... I'll wait and see. I mean, mm-hmm. the Ouya has been having problems, so we'll see if maybe this other Android console can take off. But, I mean, I'm yeah. not that excited for it. It's, yeah. it's literally just a ROM on your TV player. Mm-hmm. And there's, <laughs> a, there's actually a proliferation of these uh, Android gaming consoles, so eventually something will come out on top of the more superior buy. Now, if you're looking for a superior buy... Have I got a deal for you? What is that? You bull. Yeah. The the greatest director of video game movie history, mm-hmm. who's made such gems as Blood Rain one through three, uh, Dungeon Siege, every Far, other movie, Far Cry, every other movie you wanted to gouge your eyes out, is seeking funding on Kickstarter for Postal Two. Mm-hmm. Now he made Postal One, which I think is really funny because if you actually read the article that I'll link, they say when uh, he made Postal 1, which most movie critics call a movie when they're being generous. <laughs> wow. So if you want to fund that, you know, head to Kickstarter. Otherwise, you can just put your money in the toilet. Like, dare, you know, dare I say, look, my brother saw it, and as much as we hate his, um, his movie, Bowles movies, um, he did say that Postal was actually pretty funny or good. For what it was, um, I'm kind of interested, <coughs> interested to see how this goes. Cause, I mean, this guy—he the reason he was able to make so many movies is because there's like some type of tax credit in Germany that was able to—he was able to get all the funding for these movies to be able to buy the rights and stuff like that. I guess he, he lost that. Maybe the laws change or whatever. Yeah. And, um, he's not able. They to have do the U ball clause. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's not allowed to do it anymore. Yeah. So, but yeah, he was able to easily secure like funding. That's why he's able to do what he did, as horrible as the movies turned out to be. So yeah, it's it's interesting interesting to see how we, uh, this will uh, turn out for him. Yeah, but oh well, I I do want to see it succeed, believe it or not. But I don't wish it. failure on anybody. Like if if my passion was making movies, and it just so happened that I made horrible movies, <laughs> I would still enjoy making movies. Yeah. Um, so I don't wish him failure. I wish him to learn from his past mistakes and get better. Yeah, definitely. I I think he since then he has done like his own original movie that didn't have any license or ties or anything like that. But I haven't seen it because I kind of stopped watching movies after a certain point. <laughs> I think the last movie I saw was was Far Cry, and that was pretty bad. Uh, Terraria. Moving on. Yeah, uh, Terraria. <laughs> Which we we enjoy. Uh, actually came out on iOS last week, so it it's gone mobile. So if you want to dig 2D blocks like Minecraft, um, you can do it on your phone now. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, that is that is pretty <coughs> neat. Um, five bucks. Yeah, five bucks. Oh yeah, that's right. Five bucks. Yep. Um, it's interesting. How many? I can iOS is like super popular. How come they don't do any Android stuff? Well, initially. None of this stuff was going to happen because it was really only made by like one guy, mm-hmm. and then they had a small team to do like the net code, uh, which we actually met one of the guys that did the net code at Otacon. Oh, neat! The the place that we got our 
our vinyls for our car. They had a Terraria logo, and I was like, oh, cool, check out the Terraria logo. And the guy was like, yeah, I uh, I help work on that so I can use the logo. He's like, everything else here is like public domain, but that's like one of the only logos you'll see because I worked on it. I was like, oh, yeah, we definitely, you know, I know that game. It's cool. Mm -hmm. So, that's cool. but yeah, it was like a very small team. And then even the PC version, like when we played it, that was already considered abandoned. Like the guy had oh, already yeah. said, like, I am done. I'm working on my next project. You know, I'm moving on. And then slowly, like out of the blue, news came out of there might be an update for it. And that news turned into, oh, there's an Xbox and PlayStation version. Oh. And, you know, he said, well, I'm not going to put the Xbox and PlayStation version stuff on the PC. That later got redacted. Uh, and they are going to push out an update for PC. But then I guess they it was pretty easy to move to iOS. Mm -hmm. They just had to change the controls around. So hmm. it's oh. popular. I mean, it's not Minecraft popular. Like yeah, Minecraft to date they released the numbers early this week has sold 33 million units that's across crazy. all its platforms. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, and that's also on the tablet and everything. Yeah, they, I mean that's all of it. Like PC, Xbox, and you know it's launching on PlayStation 4, Xbox One. Mm -hmm. So, Minecraft, Minecraft is unstoppable. Sure is. And, um, <coughs> oh, pre-orders for the Wind Waker HD bundle. Now, you can pre-order them at GameStop for two ninety nine. Not bad. I mean, if you haven't picked up a Wii U and you're looking for that killer game title, why not pick up a GameCube game for the Wii U? Yeah, that, that's why I was laughing earlier when I was looking through this, you know, reading through the stories. Um... You know, it's just funny that, you know, this is the big game that Nintendo has. Up, this is the ace they have up their sleeve for this year, and it's kind of funny because it's, an it's another old game. Yeah. So. But yeah, two ninety nine Wind Waker HD. It doesn't include a new hero mode, so it's going to be a little harder than last time. Um, and it does, like, the screenshots look amazing. Yeah, it looks good. But they need to come out with some original stuff. Yeah, something new. Uh, Sony Online Entertainment, SOE, popular for their games such as EverQuest, EverQuest 2, Planet, Planet Side 2, Side. Star Wars Galaxies, which is closed, um, every other mm -hmm. MMO besides World of Warcraft and Star Wars. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, they actually got hit with some layoffs. They wouldn't confirm what the layoffs were this, this week, but they did say it doesn't affect EverQuest next. Uh, most people are speculating that it has to do with Planet Side 2. Hmm. Um, just because, you know, Planet Side 2 is out of development. So it, it's kind of what we've seen. Yeah. Where they drop developers and. Once the game's done. Right. They're kind of just sitting at their, at their offices twiddling their thumbs. Right. Their paycheck. It's not, it's not like World of Warcraft where they need a big team of developers because they have so much, so many players that they need to keep putting out content. Most MMOs can get by with a small development team and keep the art team so that developers can say, oh, what about a crab boss? Yeah, we don't have one of those. Okay, send it to the art team. Whereas World of Warcraft, because it's so big, it's like, well, we've already had like 12 crab bosses. What a crab boss with a hat. Yeah, that's why we keep you around. Yep. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they wouldn't confirm the layoffs. Uh, you know, best of luck to them. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see how they go. Yep. All right, so... Unacceptable. Yeah, unacceptable. Uh, I talked to Nikki, and Nikki said one of our biggest problems is, um, because she's our focus group. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else is vocal enough. Uh, she's our focus group. So she said one of our biggest problems is our show runs together. So when we switch segments, it's hard to tell that we're switching segments. Oh. So our next segment, and I am going to work on new transitions. Okay. Um, you know, music stuff. <laughs> Yeah, stuff like that. Uh, our next segment will be a discussion section on the dissertation of neo-economic sociological <laughs> breakdown in modern society. And otherwise, video games. Otherwise known as, why the hell can't I play Final Fantasy XIV? That's messed up. I know. Like, when did it come out? Last Tuesday? It Monday? Early access started. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, I don't have one that says it. So we'll we'll go to Oh, you can see the sides. Okay. Neat. Whatever. Previews. That's what we'll do next. Uh <laughs> <laughs> But uh 
Yeah, early access started Saturday, and last Saturday, not not mm-hmm. last Saturday, Saturday before that, mm-hmm. like over over a week ago, way back then, and we all got kind of inkling like, hey, this isn't very good because we're having trouble logging on and stuff. But most times, you know, you tried a couple times and you mm-hmm. got in. Uh, the game launched on Tuesday, and it instead of getting better, it got worse, and uh, pretty much it's to the point where. And on North American servers, if you try to log in between uh, the peak hours, not even the peak hours, if oh, you try geez. to log in between 10 a.m. and 5 a.m., like that whole clock area, wow, it, good luck. Like it is, it is hit or miss. Like you can hit there sometimes. And the the biggest problem is what I personally think. I mean, I'm not I'm not a developer. I'm an armchair developer. Mm-hmm. Uh, the biggest problem is there is no AFK kickout. Like, you can sit in the game for 30 days and it'll never kick you out, even if you never touch a button. Like, every other MMO has an AFK timer and then a kickout. It's kind of like, it's, it's exactly like a computer. Like, mm-hmm. your computer goes to sleep after 10 minutes and then it turns off after an hour. Yep. Uh, Final Fantasy doesn't have that. So, which is weird that you would think that they would never put in some type of that type of measure. Right, and the problem with that is that exacerbates the biggest problem of you can't log in. So if you do get in, you're less likely to log out. Yeah. So that just fills it up. And they, they've mentioned that uh, each each server can hold about 5,000 people and they've had over 500,000 sales. Well, doing the math... <laughs> Server the the amount of servers there are can only hold two hundred and twenty thousand people. So obviously there's a problem somewhere. Yeah. There there is a breakdown. And where I'm going with this is obviously I'm I'm mad I can't play Final Fantasy because mm-hmm. it's a it's a really good game. Like I I will review it and I will try not to let the the login issues affect it because in MMO history the the first couple days of launch. Are typically rocky, but that's that's where I'm going with this. Like, why do we accept that? Like, why do we say that yeah, is interesting? Because it, 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 it really does seem like a like a PC issue. Because you know, like, it doesn't games aren't really like broken or have these types of issues like when they come out on consoles and stuff. So I don't have too much experience with it, but I do remember like the Sim City issue, mm-hmm. uh, Diablo three. Right. You know. I mean, it, actually, this can be kind of push out to console games. Like, there are a lot of console games that have problems. Like, like Walking Dead's a big example. Like, oh, there yeah. was that Walking Dead issue where it would delete your save. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and my point with this is, why do we accept that? Why do we say, oh, well, ah, he's trying to play an MMO on launch week. Like, why is that a joke, and why aren't we doing something about it? Like, okay, if, if it's that big of an issue, we shouldn't accept that as norm. We should push the developers to change that. Yeah. Now, I understand, like, with an MMO and stuff, there's going to be problems. But I don't think there should be week-long problems. I think, yeah. I think like, Final Fantasy is a good example. They had over a million registered beta users. But they only set up servers for 220,000. Like, that seems stupid. Like, it does seem pretty stupid. <laughs> I, I don't have a degree in math, but yeah. I think that's, like, 22%. So they're, they're accounting for 22% of the people that signed up for beta. Yeah, yeah. So, were you not that confident in your product that you only thought 22% of people would continue to play it if they had to pay for it? Like, wow. honestly, I I would overestimate because especially if you're confident in it, and Final mm-hmm. Fantasy should be because it, it is a good game. Like, they they fixed all the problems with it. It is amazing looking. Better than 11. Yeah, and it, it plays great when you can get in there. Hmm. So I would have estimated like 150%. Like I would have said, okay, we need enough servers and server tech to support 100 and, you know, what is it? 1.5 million. Yeah. And say you only get 700,000. Those 700,000 people who are paying subscriptions are still going to pay for that server tech and you mm-hmm. can always scale back. Mm-hmm. Like you, I, I know server merges are like the death of MMOs, but you have to look at it from this way. If you launch an MMO and it goes completely smoothly, more people are going to stay. Like, I, Final Fantasy announced today, and I didn't get to put this in there, but 
they announced this morning that they're going to give everybody a free week, which is which is cool. But it always it's like that first impression thing, like, oh well, you know, you guys screwed up here. Mm. What happens the next time you patch? Like, yeah. Like World of Warcraft had this problem early. They never like. I would honestly say this is the worst MMO launch I've ever been a part of. Wow. And World of Warcraft was was pretty bad. Like, World of Warcraft had problems, A, because it was new. Like, MMOs that huge were were unheard of at mm-hmm. that time. And B, um, there there was a lot more players than they expected. Like, a whole lot more. Like, Final Fantasy's talking, like, you know, they had a million. World of Warcraft had a million sign up the first day that the beta registration launched. So, wow. <laughs> yeah, so they had a lot more people, but mm-hmm. um like I I just think that they should they should, you know, expect it to do better. And the yeah, that, that makes no sense 200,000. Right. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the math, yeah. Well, wow. like like I was saying, World of Warcraft's launch was was rocky. Um but you could get in and play. The gameplay wasn't uh I, I guess uh, what it should have been like it it was kind of laggy and you know if you looted some stuff you would run it and then it would show up and mm. so there there was some lag and there were some problems but overall you could get in and play uh, I would probably say four out of five times hmm. um, whereas Final Fantasy you can't even do that and that that just exacerbates the problem because then you get a people who have idle time on their hands, yeah. who go to the forums and, and complain about it. Start fishing. Right. So have you been able to log in at all? Yes, occasionally. Um, over the weekend, I pulled late night baby duty, mm-hmm. and generally, I think Saturday night, I was able to log in finally at two a.m. Hmm. Uh, last night. I wasn't able to log into my server, but I could hop onto a European server, and I made uh. another character just to screw around with some other classes. Uh, today, I came home from work and tried to log in. I did eventually get in, and then it kicked me out, and hmm. I was never able to get back in. So, I yeah. mean, it. That sucks. I think as as a gaming community, we need to find a way to to push these developers like. This isn't acceptable. Like we, you wouldn't, you wouldn't buy a car, and then say, "Oh, well, this is a new car. The transmission's kind of funny. Uh, I'll just wait for them to fix it, and it'll be fine in a week." Yeah. You you wouldn't buy, you wouldn't go to Burger King and buy a meal and say, "Well, these fries are kind of cold, but I'll, I'll go home and heat them up, and they'll be fine in an hour." Yeah, that, yeah, yeah you, not... that's that's how games are. We are paying sixty dollars for a product that they said it's gonna do this, mm-hmm. and or then we get home. The, and what about the developers that release the games that aren't even like finished that that, that exactly. they know need patches? It wasn't Skyrim like that, exactly. Yeah. So I I think there I, there needs to be something in place to protect consumers from that. Like, okay, yes, there's gonna be problems, you know. Nothing's perfect. I mean, they put cars out with recalls all the time. They put everything out with recalls. I mean, they put baby stuff out with mm-hmm. recalls, and that stuff should be tested like crazy because mm-hmm. it's babies. Uh, but uh, but these long-standing issues, like honestly, you know, they should give us a refund and say, okay, you can play the game for free, and you know, start the subscription after a month. Say, okay, we'll waive the we'll waive the door fee. Yeah, so I mean, is this issue? Do you think this issue will be resolved in a week? We'll see. I uh oh, there was a Steam update tonight. Uh, I I was talking to the other guy at work I play it with, and I I basically told him flat out. I said I I will give them until Thursday. I said their big upgrades Tuesday into Wednesday. Obviously, after the upgrade, everybody's gonna go rushing back in, and there's probably gonna be problems. But they they specifically said you know there might be problems now but it should stabilize within 24 hours. I said I said if you know if Thursday comes around and I get home from work and same things happening I said I'm probably going to be done with it. I said I I don't really have the time to waste on this anymore. Like mm-hmm. if I'm going to play a game, which could be wasting time anyway, <laughs> which is some people. Uh, I might as well at least play a game to waste it rather than spam the login button. Yeah. 
So we'll we'll see how it goes. Like I said, if if everything goes well, I will review it next week. Uh, if everything doesn't go well, I will flip the table next week. Okay. So yeah, there you have it. Fight fight the power. Fight for change. We we can make the difference. We can we can make a difference. I doubt it. Hopefully, <laughs> maybe they'll learn a lesson this time around. Maybe. So now we're doing previews. Yeah, it's that's what yeah. it says. Awesome. So uh, tell me about Hearthstone. Ah, I talked a lot. I need a drink. <laughs> yeah, I'm thirsty. Yeah, you sure got a drink. <laughs> um, Hearthstone. We we talked about it when they announced it, and it's. It's Blizzard's new game, but it's not a. It, I don't want to say it's not a AAA title, because it kind of is. Mm -hmm. But it's a free-to-play online card game, and uh, I got a video, so you don't have to look at me. <laughs> <coughs> okay, so Hearthstone. It's it's an online card game. Anybody who's ever played any collectible card game ever, Magic, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, uh -huh. Star Wars. I mean, there are literally hundreds of card games. Yeah. Magic's probably the biggest one. Um, We'll be immediately familiar with it. Uh, you know, when they first announced it, I was kind of like, oh, yeah, this, you know, Blizzard cash mm -hmm. grab, mm -hmm. milking that WoW license. Well, it went into beta about two weeks ago. Uh, very selective beta. Like, I actually stole this video from Total Biscuit <laughs> uh, because he, he's probably one of the four with the most coverage on it. Okay. And he, he you know, I, I've said this before, but he's a very smart guy. So mm -hmm. not only is he, like, a workhorse in, like, the YouTube industry, yeah. but... Uh, he plays a lot of trading card games, so he knows what he's doing. So I like watching his video because um, you get to see like the strategies and stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. And basically, it's a collectible card game. You you can buy booster packs and stuff. It's free to play, mm -hmm. um, with the exception of you have to buy the booster packs. Uh, now there are, I think there's nine classes, mm -hmm. and you start with the mage. And you can go through and unlock all the basic decks for those classes, and those cards are yours free. Like mm -hmm. you can you can play that for free. Um, and as you play the class, you level them up, kind of like an RPG. Yeah. And then as you level up, uh, levels two through ten, obviously you're already level one. Uh, each level you get a couple of core cards for that class. Now each class plays very differently, like. Obviously, the mage has a lot of direct damage, fire spells. Mm -hmm. uh, warrior can like equip a weapon so he can attack himself. Um, and then you also have minions and stuff like that. So it it's it's pretty cool in the fact that they they kept like the World of Warcraft feel to it, but still having like the card game side of it. Yeah, and that, this is the one where you can sacrifice cards to build a card you want. Yeah. That's the other side of it. I'll get to that because I, okay. I, I want to get into the monetization in that together because it all ties in. Um, but you have neutral cards too, mm -hmm. so like you don't if you're if you're a mage, you don't just have mage cards. You have neutral cards that everybody has access to. So whether you're a mage or stuff, so there's a lot of strategy involved in it. Uh, the big thing is they streamlined it. Like it is very easy to pick up. Like you don't have mana, you don't have resources, you don't have anything like that. Uh, card wise. Basically, okay. what you have is in the lower right-hand corner, you'll see three. Right now, there are three black crystals, and they just turn blue. And now there's four. You acquire one of those each turn, and that's that's your quote-unquote mana. And okay. the card cost in the upper left, which you can see I'm kind of moving through pretty quickly, is how much mana it costs. That's it. Mm -hmm. It regenerates each turn. It's one and done. So if you have four mana and you have a card that costs four, boom, done. No thinking about it. You know, you never get mana starved. A lot of stuff people complain about for card games. It's easy and accessible. And like I said, it is free mm -hmm. out of the box. Nine nine decks once you unlock them. Uh, and you can buy booster packs. And, of course, the booster packs have uh, better cards in them. I mean, yeah. it's a card game. So people are already like, oh, it's pay to win. It's pay to win. It is, but it isn't. Like, it is definitely pay to win in the aspect of if you buy a lot of booster packs, you're obviously going to have some better cards. Mm -hmm. But there are other ways to earn those cards. Uh, you had mentioned, like, you can, um, they call it disenchant, which is basically destroy a card, and you get this stuff called arcane dust, mm -hmm. which you can then use to make 
cards. And you can choose what specific card you want. Like, say you're making a super ultra mega godly troll deck, mm -hmm. and there's this super troll that you want, yeah. but you're not lucky enough to get it. You can save up that dust and use that to make that troll card, which is cool. Nice. And it balances in the fact that when you make a deck, obviously the basic decks are already made for you. Mm -hmm. But when you get a little more advanced and you want to start making your own deck, you can only have two of each card in, in the deck. So if you ever, say you buy like 20 booster packs and you get uh, like seven regular troll guys, that that's the official card name, mm -hmm. regular <laughs> troll guys, there's no reason to ever have more than two of them. Because it's not like if you put two of them in one deck, you can't put two of them in another. Mm -hmm. uh, it, they're not used like that. So you can, you know, disenchant four of those and then, you know, work on your other stuff. That's cool. So there are ways to earn cards without paying. Now, obviously, paying is going to be much faster. Uh, you can also buy card packs with gold, which you get gold by completing, like, daily objectives, like win three games with the 100 deck or, you know, stuff like that. Hmm. The other cool thing I like about it, and this is kind of where I'll probably end the preview, um, is you can't interact with the person you're playing. You can't? Other than the basic emotes that they give you. So you can't, like, spam, chat, or anything like that Trash to troll. Talk. Right. Basically, each character has, like, I think it's six, but it might be eight emotes, and they're like, hello, thank you. You know, I'm going to get you, I'm sorry, you know, like basic stuff. And of course they're in character, so if you're like, mm -hmm. if you're like the big orc, he's like, I will crush you, mm -hmm. and you know, stuff like that. But that's it. Now, if you're playing with friends, you can chat with them. Okay. So, like, I think the Total Biscuit's playing against somebody he doesn't know, so obviously he can't chat with them. But if, like, say I played you, and we yeah. were on our friends list with each other, there'd be a little chat box on there. Okay. So we could talk that way. Um, but it is in beta right now. Uh, most people who have access to the beta, me not being one of them, mm -hmm. uh, have said that the game is pretty refined. It could use a little bit of balance, but other than that, it plays really well. So I don't think it'll be in beta too much longer, which is why I'm doing the preview now. Okay, cool. I I don't know if I'll, I'll dump a bunch of money into this. I'll definitely probably buy a pack or two. I mean, they're not real bad. They're like... Basically, a pack is like five cards, and you can get, I think it's three packs for like $2 or something. Okay. So it's it's not, and the more packs you buy, the cheaper they get. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it makes sense. Um, but, I mean, it, it looks really cool. There's all the stuff you see on like the game board is interactable. Like the, the griffin will follow the cursor and stuff. You can like turn the lights out on the house. So there's a lot of cool stuff just to screw around. But the game itself, there is a lot of strategy behind it, and even though they've made it simpler, so very interesting. Yeah, it, it's it was made like a lot of people are like, oh, you're taking development time away from Titan and <laughs> World of Warcraft to work on this, and Blizzard's like, well, actually, this was made by like a team of like ten people who were screwing around, and they turned it into something that was fun. So, but. You know, there, there you go. There it is. There it is uh, Hearth Fire. Hearthstone. Hearthstone. Hearthfire Earth. is the uh, DLC for uh, Skyrim. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> good. So, next week you're going to preview Sims 4. Sims 4. Uh, mm -hmm. I will try to review... Um, crap. Final Fantasy, if Final I can play Fantasy, it. If you can log in. Thursday is your cutoff. Right. So, I, I will give them a day. Uh, you know, news, rumors, all that regular stuff. Try to have our new fancy transitions okay, next week. Cool. Uh, but otherwise, I think that'll do it for us. Is there a deal of the week this week? No deal of the week this week. I, I looked around. There aren't really much sales going on right now. So I... You can get $5 off payday one. There you go. On the Xbox. <laughs> I don't even know if we can do that. <laughs> you you can get... Uh, you can get... If you're interested in card games, you can get Magic the Gathering 2013 on Xbox Games for Gold. Yeah. Or Rainbow Six Vegas. No, uh, Vegas is until the 15th. Oh, until the 15th. Okay. Yeah, so. There you go. Because you need it. It was a good game back back in the day. Yeah, in 2006. Yeah. All right. See you next week. Adios.
Gamers Digest is a Spider One and Mr. Factastic production. All characters and games are owned by their respective companies and are used under the fair use law. Check out Gamers Digest at gamersdigest.me, on YouTube under Gamers Digest Podcast, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter at The Gamers Digest. Viewer questions and comments can always be sent to gamersdigestpodcast at gmail.com. See you next week.